Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 609th episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Shea for the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today, we've got a friend of mine, Drew Weatherhead. I was uh, a fan of his, a follower on social media. Um, he is a black belt in jiu-jitsu and um, has a popular um, Instagram channel called uh, Because Jitsu. Uh, and he's just funny and um, funny memes, but he also has good tips and, and training uh, on his channel. Uh, very accomplished uh, practitioner and, and instructor. He, uh, we met in Maine a couple years ago. I'll be going back up there this August for um, the Origin uh, Camp, the Immersion Camp. But um, he is a, he's a videographer, he's a social media marketer, um, all around accomplished dude. And uh, COVID, you know, he lives in Canada, used to, and uh, COVID wrecked him. And um, he he documented his his trials and tribulations. Actually, re- trying to return home from uh, from the the camp two years ago because things were still pretty crazy. You know, they're, they're crazy in general, but they were exceptionally crazy two years ago. And um, he kind of paused uh, through all of that and sat down and wrote a book. Um, and it's called Consciousness, Reality, and Purpose. And, uh, you know, it piqued my interest, and in, uh, I wanted to pick his brain as to, you know, what, what led to this, um, how to go about doing it. He's, he's traveling the, the U.S. still. Uh, some of the, the things he's had to do to make this happen are uh, impressive, to say the least, so I won't steal the thunder. But uh, you're in for a treat with this episode. You're also in for a treat when you join the Gorillas of Growth. Get you some. Gorillasofgrowth.com. If you want the on-demand content, it's makeeverysale.com. Both are affordable. Both will help you make every sale. All right? So get you some of that. And then come back and listen to this episode with Drew. Drew Weatherhead, probably my favorite Canadian jiu-jitsu guy. Welcome to the sales podcast. How the heck are you? Really good. How are you, Wes? I'm good, but I will, I will ask the questions. Okay. Do you, mm-hmm. We have some ground rules here, man. So we met Sorry, a couple of years ago. I'd, I'd followed you for years and I uh, met you in Maine a couple of years ago. Uh, I had to skip the origin camp last year. My daughter decided to get married. Okay. How rude. And expensive, right? I could have, I could have paid, I could have paid for that main camp many times over. I'm just saying, all right, but I, I prepaid already. So I'm heading there this year. So uh, hope you can make it and um, be good to catch up. But um, you are a man of many talents. Um, I followed your your social media for years, um, and but you've got a new book, Consciousness, Reality, and Purpose. And I was like, what in the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, as far as marketing moves go, this is completely off brand, which is catching a lot of people by surprise. But it's the difference yeah. between, between the brand and the person, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you're, um, what level of black belt are you? One uh, first degree, first degree. Uh, you've got some cool memes, you've got rash guards and t shirts that are freaking hilarious. Uh, Great videography. I mean, good content. And now all of a sudden, like from left field, here comes this. So explain yourself, mister. Yeah, this one came out of left field for me too, believe it or not. I had (laughs) no intentions ever of becoming an author in my life. It wasn't even on the board. I hadn't even ever considered it was something you could do. You know, I thought you had to go and be a journalist or learn how to like go to college to do these sorts of things. In the weird technological era we live in, you can just write and publish, self-publish a book in the same way that you don't have to go to a radio station or a TV station to have a podcast. You can just do it. And so um, sort of connecting the two together through the podcast that I have been pretty steadily doing for the last year now called the Social Disorder Podcast, a whole lot of different thoughts were being either presented to me or requiring me to go heavily down certain rabbit holes to do my own research on a bunch of different stuff. Like we do five episodes a week. So that's, uh, we did over 200 episodes in a year, which is a lot. It's a lot of information. And it just, this whole ball of information was, was building up in my brain and it started to kind of talk to each other in there and started um, asking really un 
common and deep philosophical questions that just led me down these paths towards these three major human level conversations around what is consciousness what is our reality and how how do we find our purpose these are massive massive human questions that i don't think a lot of people do themselves the justice of asking themselves maybe even later into their lives if they ever do at all so this was i guess um, partly from my own curiosity, but also then as a, a value add to people who want to or haven't asked these questions of themselves yet. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the old adage? You know, most men lead lives of quiet desperation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or, or they, you know, they I forget the exact saying, but it's like, yeah, he, he's not, you know, he's not 80. He's, he's, he's 20. He just lived that one year for 60 years. Yeah. You know, like they don't grow, they don't make any progress. Um, you know, I just I I usually train at noon for jujitsu, and there's a guy, a black belt, and he's a great human being, but his game is just pressure and and brutality. And you know, I'm now a brown belt. I can kind of hold my own against him. Uh, and but I get pissed off. You know, it's like he just tries this one move and it's just, it's just a, you know, a, a choke in the jaw. It's not even a choke, right? It's just, it, and he knows it's in the jaw and I won't tap. I'm like, screw this. Yeah. And I finally get out. Cause it's, it's exhausting as you know, to, to apply a choke takes energy. I mean, it takes energy to absorb a choke <laughs> and, yeah. and I finally get out and, and bum rush him pass his guard knee on belly. We finish in mount. But I'm I'm whooped, you know, and I'm talking to another friend of mine that's a black belt, and he's like, you know, his game stalled. Mm -hmm. And he just and it's ego and like, why do we have to go this hard? But I mean, he doesn't evolve his jujitsu game, but I mean, jujitsu is life, right? People yeah. they don't evolve in their own lives. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people they don't realize until later into the martial arts is the amount of art that goes into what we're doing. Yes. Everybody yes. sees the martial aspect because it's the most obvious. It's the kinetic part. It's the uh, material part. But the philosophy side of it that you both learn by um, absorbing it through osmosis, but also just retrospectively after you've done it for a long enough time, it absolutely translates into all sorts of other avenues of what it is to exist as a human. Yeah. So when you say we do the podcast, do you have a co-host or somebody helping you uh, produce it? No, no. It's a one-man show, more or less. I bring guests on, but about, I'd say, 60 to 70% of the episodes are solo episodes with myself, just uh, talking topics and, and thoughts. And then I'll bring other people on to talk about their specialties or they'll sort of give their take on some of my thoughts. And then, uh, you know, I spin off down other rabbit holes that I got to go, you know. So you're doing at least three days a week of just solo? Uh, yeah, yeah, three to five. Yeah, man, that's intense. Uh, what, how are you doing that? What are you researching? I mean, are you talking about things that you're reading? Uh, you know, how do you keep that interesting? Because that would be a concern of mine. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, interestingly, once you have uh, somewhat of an idea of I mean, you can speak to jujitsu with this. I mean, the analogies are endless, right? But once you have a holistic idea of what either the game is philosophically or in the martial sense, then you can just sort of see any given thing and give your take on it. So, I mean, we get the, the news cycle is relentless. You can have 20 articles or stories a day that you're like, that's interesting. Um, I'm going to look into this and then give your take on what you looked into. And I mean, I can, I can ramble. It's, I've got a little bit of gab going on where I can not just give my taste, sort of correlate them between other ideas that I've had that are similar in the same thought space. And I find it's uh, intriguing. My listeners like it. And uh, it is kind of its own art form, though. You figure out how to do it, the more you do it. Yeah, for sure. So, so you, you woke up one day and you're, you're sitting at your keyboard uh, chewing on uh, an energy bar and, and there's words on the screen and you said, oh, uh, what the hell's happening? <laughs> uh, not not so much. It's, it's a little more nuanced than that. Um, it really spawned out of the pandemic um, for multiple reasons. Firstly, um, I had a podcast that was a predecessor to this one, which was the Because Jitsu podcast. So I just branded it after my meme page, which is how most people know me online. And 
um, just talk mostly about jujitsu stuff, sometimes about world events, but you pull it back to jujitsu and try to keep it on topic. But in the meantime, the world was going to hell and we weren't supposed to talk about it. And there were so many things that we were supposed to talk about that at some point it just got too much for me. And I decided to to hell with it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the things that matter because I'm tired of talking about better arm bars. Well, people are, you know, their lives are falling apart and we're supposed to just not talk about the elephant in the room. So I rebranded my podcast a year ago, February, 2022, starting with an episode called the elephant in the room, where I just went off for about an hour on all these different things. Like I lost my business over the pandemic due to Canadian restrictions and mandates. Nobody cared. Nobody's allowed to talk about it. Nobody's allowed to question it. My sister got paralyzed by the shots, not supposed to talk about it, not supposed to believe it, not supposed to, you know, bring it up publicly. And I'm like, you know what? No, no more, no more. I'm going to talk about all this stuff. And to speak to your point about what, what is there to talk about that much? Well, when you're allowed to talk about anything, when you give yourself permission to talk about anything, you don't have to worry about social media or a news cast or telling you what you can and can't talk about it turns out there's like 90 percent of what there is to talk about still out there to talk about yeah well i love the old adage you know you, you don't talk about sex money religion politics and mixed company and i'm like well, what else is there to talk about yeah it gets you pretty know? vanilla doesn't it <laughs> yeah i'm not good at small talk i'll just go home you know i just won't show up so let's talk about things that mean things but people can't talk People can't, mm. people cannot communicate. They cannot deduce. Um, they cannot have a civil discourse with someone who sees things differently than them. It, and I think it's by design, you know, there's another elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, most of our discourse these days tends to be, uh, I would say if I had to guess, uh, probably upwards of 50 between 50 and 75 percent of all discourse people have is online through social platforms or what have you and that is a totally different way of trying to converse back and forth because it's more about it it's more about ego it's more about my opinion and just giving your two cents instead of actually having a human conversation which is the default when you have a human in front of you you're more cordial because you have like life uh, in person face to face interaction it's just a wholly different thing and the problem is we've got a society now to speak to the social disorders out there we've got an entire society out there that has uh, either absorbed this style of communication as default or they've been raised in it and they don't know the difference. And they actually take the virtual style of interaction into the physical where it doesn't exist and it doesn't play well, you know? Yeah. You know, it's funny. You, you see shows on uh, both like fiction, but like documentary showing prisoners. And there's, there's a pecking order, <clears throat> right? There's uh, rules that they follow internally, you know, not, not the prison rules, like the, the real rules put on by the gangs and whatever. And, you know, you always hear about respect and, and if you disrespect someone, right, you'll, you're going to get hurt in that environment. And, and I saw a, a quote, I forget exactly how it was, but it's like, we became uncivilized when it became uncivilized. To basically smack the shit out of somebody when they when they get out of line, right? Mm. Now everybody's polite and demure. And it's like sometimes a dude needs to get punched in the mouth. You know, it's like, yeah. okay, I'll buy you a beer and we can, you know, it's all good, but don't do that again. Uh yeah, and, absolutely. I, I remember that I I know the quote you're talking about, something about how um civilized people will be more polite if they know that they can catch an axe in the head if they don't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, maybe we were born 100 or 200 years too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. So so tell me about the book, Dan. What are you answering questions? Are you asking more questions? Is it meant to get people just to think? Are you trying to give answers? Well, how hubris would it be for me to talk about consciousness and reality and purpose and give everybody all the answers to those <laughs> there's nothing but questions in all of those but it's the question you're people... a black belt in brazilian jiu-jitsu right. i know like you get this knowledge they give you a chip right that just gives you this infinite wisdom that that doesn't happen no unfortunately not no I try to stay i've been lied from... to for six years 
<laughs> try to stay away from the idea that if you're an expert in one thing, you're an expert in all things. And this is a, um, a falsehood that a lot of people fall into. So I'll, I'll put it out there right away. I'm not looking to answer questions for you. I'm, I'm looking for people to ask themselves the questions, which is really where the power comes from. So um, I go into nine different chapters on each of those topics, nine chapters on consciousness, nine chapters on reality, and nine chapters on purpose. And I, I like that it follows in that direction because from consciousness naturally moves into reality as your consciousness does um, allow for or disallow for what you perceive as real. And that's a whole conversation that can get very philosophical and very fascinating, but also it, it has a lot of power in trying to um, take the power back over what you perceive as real. And what other people are trying to tell you is speaking back and it was nothing but just propaganda and on propaganda and they they produced projected a world that was not actual and it changed society in massive massive ways that wouldn't have happened if people took a little more sovereignty over their mind and were able to you know, do that critical thinking thing instead of doing that get in line thing. So from consciousness to reality, and then it leads towards purpose. Once you understand these things a little bit more, ask yourself the questions that lead you towards understanding, then it actually becomes possible to find your purpose. And and to speak to your point about people that um, stopped or stalled at 20 and they died at 80 and they really learned nothing in between. We live in a culture where you're expected to basically pick a career or a vocation at by age 20, 18, sometimes right after you graduate, pick a vocation and stay until you're 65. And between then and now, you try to get as good as you can at your vocation. By the end of it, now you're allowed to live your life again. You can make choices again. And I think that's a massive disservice to so many people out there that believe that, that is allowed to do. But yeah. meanwhile, you can take control of that process at any given point along the way and break that cycle. And it, all it takes is, first of all, the understanding that you can. And second of all, going out there and asking these types of questions that can lead you towards the answers that then lead you towards fulfillment, which I think is what most people are missing in life. They, they, their purpose is missing, which therefore means that they can never find fulfillment in what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, what's the old adage? It doesn't matter what the truth is if you can get them to ask the wrong questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if I, you know, if, if I, I'm playing hide and go seek, and you know, I'm I'm here in my office, but I make you think that I'm in the house next door. I don't. I can make all the noise I want. <laughs> you're, you're never going to find me over there. Yeah. Uh, but like that, that's what they've done to us, right? Like, go to college. Like this whole college debate. I go to college, get a degree. And, you know, have a fulfilled life. I'm like, really? Who says? It's a prescribed life at that point. This all um, had a major shift around the, what was it, about 1920s or so when Rockefeller basically took over and instituted the uh, public school system of America, which changed from a typical charter system, which was more old world. It was more Socratic. You would ask questions. It was more critical thinking. And um, he changed it. And he was very public about why he wanted it changed very public. This was not a conspiracy. He said, I want a nation of workers, not a nation of thinkers. And so he basically changed this thing to produce automatons. You wanted to get people who knew how to read something, repeat something, show up on time. And uh, they built this sort of uh, Pavlovian response to a bell that would be good for when they went to the factory. And that they did great with that. They built an empire off that. But what they did in the meantime is they dumbed down their society in a way that critical thinking isn't even on the table. It's not even considered laudable. All you're supposed to do is just know the answers that you've been given and repeat them so that you can pass the test. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they do. They just teach to the test. Mm -hmm. um, so how are you getting the word out on this? I mean, I, you, how long did it take you to write it? And then like, did you have a, a big, a big vision on what to do with it? Or like, a, are you taking this kind of one step at a time? It's kind of hard to explain because I've had a couple people ask me this question, like, what's, what was your process? Because I would like to clearly you've started something and finished something. So if I want to do that, I'll just follow your process. And man, like it was, it was almost third party. It's really hard to explain, but the thoughts, like I said, had 
uh, gathered in my brain for so long that by the time I came to put pen to paper, or in this case, fingers to keyboard, it just flowed right out in this very strange way that all I had to do was give it the, the out and it came out. So I started with the idea of those three major focuses, consciousness, reality, and purpose. And then I said, all right, um, I'm going to do three sub focuses within each one. And then three chapters within each sub focus, which led to nine chapters for each, which led to 27 chapters. So I basically had my, my layout right there and it was all arbitrary. I didn't have to, but I just decided, okay, this, this will be how I branch out for each of these things. I'm going to give myself a basic premise of what to go for, and then just start filling in the blanks. And once I went to fill in the blanks, I found that it was absolutely very, very easy because most of those topics were things that I had talked about both myself and with very, very smart people over the last six to eight months before that. So it was more like it was, um, it was reporting back <laughs> more than it was trying to um, think of something new. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you're going live with this now. Um, do you have other plans? I mean, are you going to do workshops around this? Are you going to try to coach people through this, how to think more clearly, you know, what, what happens next? Um, for now, everything has been leading up to the writing and finally the self publishing of this. So it's out there <clears throat> in the public for people to have, as it stands right now, we're uh, recording Wednesday. It's going to come out live worldwide on Amazon on Friday. So a couple days away, uh, people can pre-order it right now in the Kindle digital version, as well as the hardcover physical version. And I'm working right now on the audible version too. So it'll be available on audiobook as well. Um, and between those three formats, I just, I'm looking for, massive distribution is what it is. I want to get the word out so that people can come experience it. And then at that point, almost like in the way that it naturally came into reality, um, I want to see naturally what it leads towards. So it may be coaching, it may be public speaking, it may be going on other people's podcasts to talk about these big ideas and start, um, you know, batting the ideas back and forth between intellectuals. I'm just, I'm really happy that it's done. And I kind of want it to, to pick up its own life and see where it goes. In the meantime, I've got enough social presence to push it out into the ether and then see where it lands. Yeah. How do you juggle both? Because promoting a book, writing a book, promoting it, uh, doing this podcast versus uh, your jujitsu stuff. I mean, they're totally different things. How, how do you manage all that? Um, well, I mean, this is the secret to life and especially when it comes to business, really. And I'm sure there's no surprise to you or any of your listeners, but if you find something that you love doing, and you uh, tie that into some sort of vocational avenue, it's not work. So I probably work like every waking hour of every single day, but none of it ever feels like work. I'm doing jujitsu. I'm posting about jujitsu, jokes about jujitsu. I'm selling rash guards about jujitsu. I'm talking about all sorts of fascinating topics that fascinate me with fascinating people. And then I'm writing it down in a book of fascinating things. Like none of that to me is work. And it's really like, some days I want to stay up later than I should stay up to continue doing it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, how did you start the, uh, because jujitsu, because that's oh, yeah. always been fun and it's cool. I mean, you got a big following Instagram just looked up, you know, 178,000 followers. I mean, you're doing something right there. Yeah. So this happened when I was a purple belt around 20, I want to say 2016, 2015. I think it was uh, September of 2015. So it's been going for around eight years at this point. And um, it started off honestly out of uh, a bit of frustration. Like I started making jokes about jujitsu because I was pissed off with jujitsu. There was a lot of political stuff that was going on with me around the purple belt uh, level with our gym and with affiliations and not getting promoted for years and years and years. And I was, um, I was mad, you know, so I started off in work. I was a welder for 15 years. So I was on the floor in the shop and took my phone out and, and said, uh, all right, let's look up a meme app. I just downloaded a free meme app, started making memes on the floor. Um, and, created an Instagram account in about five minutes. And people ask me, how did I come up with the idea? I'm like, it wasn't an idea. I was like, what am I doing this for? Uh, because Jitsu? I don't know. Sure, that that's the name. And I just started spitting them out there into the ether. And first of all, it was cathartic because I just wanted uh, 
something to release. You know, I wanted to yell at the wind, basically. But what surprised me was that it took off. And so many people, they weren't getting mad at it. They were actually laughing with me. It was it was a commiseration almost and of like getting pissed off that I'm, I'm hitting their sacred cow. They're like, yeah, we are stupid, aren't we? Because of that, right? Isn't that dumb? I agree. And all of a sudden I realized like I'm not alone in these feelings and actually it's turned out it's universal so we we built this community just very naturally from people that all had very similar experiences all the way up from white belt to black belt and it's been that ride ever since that's cool so you just kind of kind of like jujitsu right review a lesson tonight and then go teach it tomorrow (laughs) (laughs) That'll be what we cover tomorrow. <laughs> I guess it, as long as you're one chapter ahead of uh, of the class, then then you're the teacher, huh? Yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, with everything, you find truisms, right? So I came across all sorts of different tropes that people just feel as humans doing jujitsu. And it's it's simple enough, at least from my mind, to make little quips about it, one-liners about how people tie their belt wrong or show up late to class or whatever it is. You know, there's things that are just universal, no matter what gym or affiliation you come from. And if you can find what those are and just keep pushing out funny pictures and memes about it, dude, everybody loves that. It turns out that that was a massive um, need within the community that uh, there was a, there was a couple people doing it at that time, but almost nobody. I was really early to it, which allowed for that massive growth too. I filled a void for sure. Yeah. 2015. I don't even think I was on Instagram in Mm. 2015, but Hey, I was on LinkedIn in 2004. So, all right. So back up. (laughs) (laughs) OG. OG baby. (laughs) Uh, that's cool. So, uh, you moved to Texas, um, had to escape, uh, Trudeau. I mean, he's so kind and loving and he has very nice hair and a nice smile. Why, why would you leave such a loving dictator? Beautiful socks too. He's really uh, killing the fashions. <laughs> no, um, it, it was, it was not easy getting out of Canada when we did, we've had to do it twice now and, um, not to get, political with medical opinions because I'm really not but apparently some people are and make it very difficult to exist in the first world without certain medical interventions including this proprietary vaccine they came out with and if you didn't get that and if you didn't need it and didn't get it they didn't care and they made Mm -hmm. your life hell up in Canada Um, I I couldn't go out to public gatherings I couldn't go to other people's houses I couldn't uh, fly I couldn't like all of this stuff they just absolutely threw you into second class citizen um positions and made your life hell. And in the meantime, I had already lost my business between 2020 and early 2021 of continual mandates, lockdowns, restrictions, especially on the the fitness industry. Man, fitness got hit really, really hard because yeah. especially jujitsu. How are you supposed to have social distance jujitsu? <laughs> I made a joke because I, I got out of the welding industry because of all the ups and downs of the market. Anywhere it they that just produce and I can produce. So I'm just going to do that. Well, lo and behold, like a a year and a half into going brick and mortar and, and taking all the risks it takes to start a brick and mortar business. um, The world shuts down and you aren't allowed to touch people anymore in an art that requires you to touch people. So just real bad timing on that one. But um, yeah, so we live mobile right now and we have for the last year and a half, I ended up not only having to shut down the business, but also uh, sell my house in the process. And I've got, uh, uh, I'm a single income provider for a family of six that now lives full time in a, in an RV that we travel around six months in Canada during the nicer months. And then six months down here in the States during the, the winter months. Oh crap. That's what you're doing now. Yeah. Been doing it for a year and a half. Oh my gosh. Uh, Cause you had your own jujitsu school, right? In Canada. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And um, I guess you can't start a school six months at a time. Huh? No. <laughs> no, but um, in the process, like silver linings all over the place. I don't mean to sound like I'm griping about everything because there's all sorts of good that's come out of this, um, you know, despite the bad, not because of it. But despite the bad, I had to learn how to take my um, my value online and really double online instruct stepping in person through my gym digitally to the world that opened up all sorts of things that weren't and maybe wouldn't have been available to me if I didn't really need them to be. 
Yeah. Hey, necessity is the mother of invention, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Uh, so where are you now? Are you in your RV? Um, I'm recording in my truck. This is why I've got the nice uh, green screen background. This is my uh, my GMC studio. Oh, that's badass. <laughs> and what's your, do you have a like a strong cell signal or you go somewhere and get a Wi-Fi? No, we've got the, the Elon Musk system. We got the Starlink for mobile. Oh, wow. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah, we figure it out, you know, <laughs> necessity again. Oh, man, that's cool. Uh, very nice. So, um, so w- were you writing the book then on the road from your RV? Yeah. Yeah. The whole time. Mm-hmm. Dang. Dude, that's impressive. I mean, uh, if you told me you like you knew Taekwondo, like I wouldn't be more impressed than, than what you just <laughs> told me. <laughs> well, that is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are you teaching or do you, you just join a local gym to, to keep rolling or what do you do? Uh, it's kind of like a gypsy lifestyle where you figure it out wherever you're at. You know, I've taught in some places where they would uh, like me to, I never impose on anybody, but, uh, I'm just happy to be able to get rounds as it stands right now. I'm training at Tim Kennedy's gym in uh, yeah. Cedar park and, uh, Giancarlo Bodoni is teaching the gi there. So they don't need any instruction, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. between the classes that I go there, they've got like 15, 20 different black belts there. So, um, yeah. I'm, it's a nice area to not only get really meaningful rounds, but also to step back into a student role for a while, which I hadn't really in, encompassed for years before that I've been in the instructor role, which is valuable. It's not, not valuable. It's just a different thing, you know? So it's almost sure. like a, a respite from having to be the instructor and just go back to relaxing and enjoying other people showing you new things. Man, I wish I'd known you were there. Cause I was out a few months ago and, uh, cause I'm, I'm part of Gracie Humida. So I was, oh, cool. I was going to go up there and I didn't know anybody and Tim wasn't around. He, he was out of town and um, I was going to drive out from Bastrop because I was out by my mom with my mom out there. And so I went to the, the South location, you know, Paulo's uh, Paulo. place. Uh, so I had a good session down there, but um, yeah, uh, I go to Austin a couple of times a year to see my mom. So I'll try to coordinate schedules with you. Mm, yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Are you going to Maine? Uh, we'll, we'll see. So there's a couple things involved in that. Firstly, um, Biden needs to change their administration's uh, role in vaccine requirements for flying. The U.S., I don't know if a lot of Americans even know this, but the U.S. is one of, I think, only eight countries left in the entire planet that won't allow unvaccinated foreigners to fly in. So, um, yeah, still, still not allowed. It's supposed to, it just got... Um, shot down in the Senate, and I think it's going to the House next. They're talking about May 11th, perhaps uh, it coming down, but it all depends on votes again. They may vote to keep it in enacted. And in that case, you know, I won't be able to fly from, I'll be in Alberta at that point in Canada. Uh, I won't be able to fly to Maine. If it's available, I would love to. Um, but But beyond that, I would have to try to drive down the driven border, which is a coin toss. It all depends on the the border officer there, whether they ask if you're vaccinated or not. And often they don't, but if they do it, well, there goes your trip, you know? So what are you supposed to do? Mm. It's, it's this crappy uh, catch 22 scenario that, I mean, really doesn't need to exist. It never needed to, but it certainly doesn't mm. at this point, you know, yeah. but again, there's yeah. just, it's all political. It's all political. Oh, totally dude. It's, we could go for hours on that. <laughs> Uh, I'm not happy about it. So man, where, um, where do you want people to go? I'm going to be linking to your Instagram because underscore Jitsu and it's J I T S U. So, uh, you've got a link tree there. So that's probably the simplest thing. Yep. Yep. It will be populated with everything to get you everywhere. Basically I've got a membership site that has over 550 instructional videos. People can pay monthly for, I've got uh, instructionals on my own website on BJJ fanatics on jujitsu X. I've got, uh, the links to the book. I've got links to the rash guards, shirts, all sorts of stuff that will be up there. And if people want to hear me, uh, blabber more, I'm uh, recording five days a week. You can catch me on the social disorder podcast available everywhere. Yeah. Very cool. I will check that out as well. Well, all right. Drew from your GMC, man. Thanks for coming on the show. It's been great catching up. It's been a pleasure, Wes. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Have a good one.
break the cycle of education, of expectation, of children, of adults. Uh, ask better questions. Uh, seek fulfillment. So it's hard to argue with the, th- the points he's bringing up. Critical thinking is no longer a thing. You see that every day. Um, I wonder, you know, sometimes people are just being manipulative uh, when they make stupid posts, but I think most of the time they're truly just that stupid. And uh, it's frustrating. So I I see uh, personally uh, myself getting less and less in enjoyment out of uh, social media and the conversations that I see more and more, I'm checking out of that stuff. Um, you know, but in general, you need to ask better questions. Uh, that's what professional salespeople do. You know, great doctors ask great questions. Great attorneys ask great questions. You know, they say uh, an attorney, a good attorney won't ask a question they don't know the answer to. In sales, our job is to ask questions that our prospects cannot answer. I get into that in all of my training whether it's Make Every Sale or the Gorillas of Growth, and I elaborate on that. Uh, But you need to ask yourself better questions and be honest about it. That's why people retain coaches and trainers like me is because it's hard to push yourself. Uh, You know, the old adage is if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So do you want to go far? If so, who are you going with? If you don't have the right people around you or nobody around you, that might answer why you're not where you want to be. So start doing some critical thinking. Ask some harder questions. Get Drew's book, Consciousness, Reality, and Purpose. Uh, start training jujitsu. Just do a lot more. All right? Expand. Grow. The world needs you. Thanks for listening. Now go sell something. <laughs>